So as I covered in my most recent video, inventory within the Toronto and GTA real estate market has absolutely come to a standstill. People are simply not listing their properties for sale. And yes, although active inventory is increasing on a month over month basis because there's a surplus of listings that carry over into the next month and don't sell in that given month, new inventory, so new homes coming for sale, replenishing the market is very far and few in between and this is due to multiple reasons both on the demand side of things and the supply side and things and of course as prices continue to decline sellers are less motivated to sell but this leads me to ask a great question that I think a lot of people would find informative and a question that a lot of people have asked me in my DMS or via my message which is although prices are coming down inventory is low who exactly is is selling right now in other words put what type of seller is picking now to go on market you know we're dealing with a very slow and cool summer market prices are on a continuous decline so who's choosing this exact time to go on market well i'm going to answer that question in today's video and while answering it i'm going to touch on a bunch of different topics as i always do on this channel hello everyone if you're new to the channel welcome my name is sam a toronto real estate agent who actively works with buyers and sellers across the gta on this channel we like to discuss Discuss all things having to do with the Toronto and GTA real estate market. Market stats, market trends, buyer advice, seller advice, area analysis, building reviews, pre-construction previews, property tours, and everything in between. So if you find this type of content informative, feel free to subscribe, to follow for more, or get in touch with me with any other questions you may have. Lastly, feel free to join my exclusive WhatsApp group chat. It is a newsletter where I release on a bi-weekly to weekly basis, market updates, market stats, Really, honestly, the numbers and data that I make in preparation for these videos or if I'm doing research for a particular client. Anyways, let's put that aside and let's get to the point of today's video. Who is actually going on market right now? Well, before I answer that, let me set the table to give you context of what type of market we're dealing with right now. For more detailed numbers, you can check my previous video. But in the previous video, I did make mention that inventory is depressing new inventory is absolutely pathetic. What do I mean by that? Let's, let's take a look at this excerpt from my Google Sheets where I keep track of these numbers. This is just from January to the most recent month we have in full July of 2023. So it's not accounting for August. And we clearly see that on a month over month basis, new inventory, so new homes coming onto the market for sale was on a steady and healthy uptrend, right? On a month over month basis, more new properties were coming onto the market for sale. This is across the GTA, by the way. So all home types across the entirety of the greater Toronto area. The biggest jumps we here we see to the tune of 33% occurred from February to March and April to May. February to March is normal seasonal, right? That's when the spring market kicks off. April to May, that big thrust, that second big jump in inventory was due to the high prices that we were seeing in April and May. A lot of sellers really liked what they were seeing and decided to get involved with the market. I've covered the peak of the market thus far has occurred in April of May of 2023, pretty much all the gains we saw in terms of price point at that point in time are gone by now. But that was the resurging market, right? April and May of 2023 are the highest points of the market within the GTA real estate market since spring of 2022, when the market was obviously at its all time peaks. But the rate of supply significantly slowed down into June, only 5% increase. And now into July, on a month over month basis, we see a 13% decrease. And you may be looking at this and say, well, why is this bad? This looks actually pretty healthy. It's only one month into July that inventory in terms of new inventory is down. Well, I agree. If we just look at January to July, 13,000 new listings doesn't look pathetic, but if we compare it to what we're seeing in 2022, it's quite anemic. Just look at the same stretch in 2022. In March, there were 20,000 new listings, 18,000 in April, 18,000 in May of 2022, 16,000 in June of 2022. And in July of 2022, yes, there were 12,000. So year over year, July of 2023, 
although I still contest is very sad, is still higher in terms of new inventory on a year over year basis. Nonetheless, though, July of 2022 and August of 2022 were historically the worst inventory months in the most recent history of the Toronto real estate markets. So at this point in time, we're barely above the lowest levels we've seen in recent history. And obviously, once again, our inventory is low for good reason, both downward pressures on the supply side of things. Simple case of the matter is the law of supply when the price of a given good is low well quantity supply of that given good is going to be less at a market level so these declining prices are not enticing sellers to jump on market at the same time on the buyer end of things well there's a diminishment and there's downward pressure on buyers higher interest rates and overall less enthusiasm regarding getting involved with the market lastly of course some of this is seasonal as well the summer markets are typically the slowest inventory levels in the summer markets are usually lower but not to this level and as a last matter this is especially disappointing because a lot of people anticipated as the bank of canada increases interest rates for there to be this flood and rush of inventory on the market i mean people thought this would lead to a market crash and i was never of that opinion people who have watched this channel for a long time know that i never bought into the crash talk I did foresee a correction and a correction has occurred in regarding prices, but the flood of inventory that people anticipated, I was always suspicious of due to the simple fact that a lot of people will batten down the hatches and cut all expenses if need be before having to go on markets if monthly mortgage payments is the main issue. And secondly, obviously banks are allowing extended and moratorization rates, which is helping a lot of buyers who've bought in the last year and a half at high prices or bad prices to hold steady. So because of those reasons, I never saw this flood of inventory that was supposed to happen. However, I did think there will be a small uptick nonetheless. I don't call it a flood, called a leakage, but we haven't even seen a leakage of inventory. So now that we've set the table as to what is happening, I've explained briefly, really briefly why it's happening. Check out my other videos for more in-depth analysis as to these downward pressures. Let me explain who is actually going on market. And this is a question I get asked often because I just on my Instagram, for instance, promoted my latest listing uh, that came on market. And when I talk about these matters, people always ask me, well, who's going on market? Who's actually choosing this point in time? Time to sell. Well, for this part, I'm going to use my on the ground experience as a Toronto real estate agent, actively working with buyers and sellers across the GTA. On this channel, I like to base my opinions and the information I provide you both upon the quantitative, so the hard numbers and the qualitative, my on the ground experience as an agent actively working. And here I'm going to use my experience in two senses, the sellers I'm currently working with and the buyers I'm working with and who we're buying from. So using my experience from both ends of the spectrum, representing buyers and sellers last month and a half, I would probably have to say I bought three to four properties and I just listed one a couple of days ago. So using that experience and also people I'm talking to interested sellers, I can tell you there are three main types of people going on market in today's slow and declining market. And we'll go through them quickly. Number one. No, so let's start with number one. Number one, the biggest group of sellers right now who are actually actively getting involved in the market despite the falling prices, which are downsizers or retirees. So in most cases, these are people who have owned for more than 20 years, more than 30 years. These are people who have bought in the late 80s or early 90s or even before that. In one example, of course, I can't reveal too much because there's confidentiality. I'm speaking to a seller who's interested in selling who purchased their property for $210,000 right now in the worst case scenario. I mean, if I do a horrendous job and I'm completely incompetent, they will probably get a 1,100,000 for their property. In the most likely scenario, they will probably get 1.2 million or $1,220,000 in that range. So this is a person who's bought for $200,000, give or take, and can sell it for a million dollars more in the more likely scenario. And obviously they have reasons within their life that's motivating them to sell, whether it's downsizing, whether it's you know moving into a retirement home, or whether it's permanently going to Florida or a different city. These individuals are not that concerned with regards to, hey, prices are down maybe 7%, 8% from the highs of the spring of 2023, or even more, 20 to 30% from the highs of the spring of 2022. Of course, 
timing matters, right? I would be able to sell the property for more and they know it if they decided to sell it earlier. But at the end of the day, when you're just talking about no mortgage left on the property, $1 million to $1.2 million in terms of just getting liquid funds, the primary reason for going on market is not to offload something you can't afford or to become rich, is for life purposes, once again, downsizing or moving out. Well, of course, timing the market is not the biggest priority for you. If not, it's not even a top three priority. If anything, these types of sellers that I'm talking to and I'm, that I'm working with actively are not that concerned about how much they can get, but they're actually more concerned with regards to what they can buy. And they always want to buy first for great reason, actually. And one of my most recent listings, not the current one I have, but previous to that one was this type of seller. There are many I'm talking to who are these types of sellers. And those are the people who are going on market. And I also speak from the buying side as well, which helps me transition to the second type of seller that's going on market right now in today's market which are estate sales slash POA sales. So power of attorney sales. These are similar to the downsizers or the retirees. But of course, in the case of estates or POAs, it's often the family member selling the property due to a death in the family. So the owner has passed away or the owner is incapacitated in some sort of extent. And there's a power of attorney, typically the kids. And although I've once again seen this both on the selling and buying side, here, let me touch on my buying experience. For instance, I purchased a detached bungalow in Oshawa for the second lowest price so far in 2023 within that community. So a kilometer radius, which I'm pretty proud of, to be honest with you. But my clients purchased it because it was an estate sale. It was the kid offloading the property. They're looking to pretty much liquidate as soon as possible to get the money. And they're not haggling over price all that much. And this is where I'll touch on something actually that I like to speak about, which is it's a misnomer to think where the true discounted deals are, are foreclosures or power of sales, not power of attorney sales, but power of sales. So where the bank is taking possession of the property because the owner has defaulted. That's not where the true deals are, because there's a lot of risks you take on when you buy from a bank, right? The bank will not represent or warrant a single thing. If it's unpaid taxes, unpaid condo fees, you're held reliable on that. And oftentimes from the buying side, it's actually quite a little bit difficult to get approved for financing, assuming you are using financing in terms of a mortgage to buy from a bank. It's, it's a case by case basis, but generally speaking, that is the case. And the bank at the end of the day has to still represent the best interests of the owner who's defaulted on their mortgage, right? Because it's not like in the States where it's a foreclosure, the bank takes over and you're out of luck. It's the bank's asset now. Not really. In Canada, rules are a bit different. The bank still has to provide any proceeds that are left over to the seller. So as a result, the bank still has to represent the best interest of the seller, even though they've taken possession where the true deals are. And you can get a lot of good discounted prices are the estate sales, because as I just previously touched on it, the kids are looking to liquidate as soon as possible to get the money. And that's a bit of a harsh way to put it, perhaps. But that's just my experience. Your experience can differ. Those are the first two types of sellers that are going on market. But the third type of seller is a little bit less common from my experience, because the first two in my experience are more common in today's market. Nonetheless, though, the third type of seller, and once again, I'm seeing this for on the buying side of things are those individuals who unfortunately, cannot afford their mortgages anymore and have to list. Now, this pool of seller is far less than the previous two I mentioned. By the way, let me emphasize the fact that this is not a scientific study. These three pools of sellers that I'm listing are not an all exhaustive list. There's tons of different types of sellers who sell for tons of different reasons, even when inventory is low. Nonetheless, though, on the buying side, I have come across a couple of listings that I've purchased for clients where the people selling it were really motivated to sell. They were quote unquote, distressed sales. For instance, another really proud purchase of mine. And once again, I'm sorry if this comes across as self promotional or bragging, but I'm just using it to get across the point was a unit I bought in a downtown Toronto condo building for $525,000 where the comps, the most recent comps were for six, 10 and $600,000. Partially we got very lucky because it was a distress sale. So I'm not going to, you know, toot my horn too much, but I did get a pretty decent price. I would have to say. 
And once again, it was because the situation was a distressed situation to respect the confidentiality. I'm not going to go into too much of detail, but interest rates are higher and people are having a difficult time. Now, as I mentioned previously in the video, these type of sellers are still not to the extent that a lot of people anticipated because a lot of people who are very bearish on the market, and I think the market is going to crash and prices are going to drop 50% and all of a sudden the condos are going to be $300,000 again, just absurd idiots out there thought that as the Bank of Canada increased rates, there would be a flood of inventory. Like that scene from The Shining when the elevator doors open and there's a flood of blood. That's what they thought would happen. And guess what? The Bank of Canada may still increase interest rates in September. That's the next time they're meeting and that's the next time they're going to make an announcement. And even if they do it then, I still don't anticipate it happening. I do think there will be some people going on market as we've discussed now, but not to the extent to crash the market. But who knows in september they might not increase rates anyways at this point in time it just depends on the cpi and you really can't predict it if i had to make a prediction for the remainder of 2023 putting aside what the cpi is i would probably have to say that at most we're going to see one more interest rate hike but I could be very much so wrong about that. This is Sam from Siberia 6 Real Estate. Let me know if you have any further questions about anything discussed in today's video. As always, thank you very much so for watching. Stay safe and stay tuned. Thank you.